Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members of the Patreons, make sure to subscribe. We are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers until the end of the year, so help me out there and let's go guys. So, today I wanted to talk a little bit about the EF-2000 or the Eurofighter. We already talked about a little bit on the F-18 this week and the F-16, how and when they would be added. And now I wanted to talk about the Eurofighter because a lot of people uh, have been asking me to actually talk about it. And it's a very interesting aircraft that I never actually fully went and talked about the, the full performance of this aircraft, right? So, obviously, first, uh, it would have counters, uh, 90s, 4 plus generation aircraft, like the Gripen, the Rafale, the MiG-29M or SMT, the F-16C Block 52 Plus or something like that. Uh, it doesn't need to be 90s, you know, but this kind of line of thinking of 90s onwards aircraft right it will not come alone that's for sure and you will know why uh, so how would it be added well first we need to actually see and basically take a look on the performance of the aircraft the weapons and the sensors that he has to actually have a conclusion so the performance is very similar from what we have in the game right now in top tier but with some things even better so for example the weight of the Eurofighter is pretty much the same when empty uh, as the MiG-29, so around 11 tons, you know, uh, so heavier than the F-16, for example, but it has two Eurojets EJ-200 turbofan engines with around 90 kilonewtons of static thrust. This is, for these smaller engines, for, you know, these type of lighter aircraft, 90 kilonewtons for aesthetic max power is a lot of power. And you notice that with the thrust to weight that he has with around 1.15 uh, of thrust to weight when fully loaded for an air-to-air -air interception. Uh, for example, the MiG-29 is around 1.09. The F-16C is around 1.09 as well. Like, it's amazing. It's, it has a better thrust to weight than the MiG-29 that we have in game. So, yeah, scary. Uh, max speed would be normal, like Mach 2, you know, uh, for high altitudes, but... The max speed on the deck would be around 1.25, so very similar to what we have in the game, right? Um, you know, it has basically almost two times the combat range of a MiG-29-912, so it has basically, you know, the same kind of max speed, uh, the same kind of acceleration, a little bit better, not by much. As I said, the thrust rate is improved, but yeah. Um, but with basically twice as many as much autonomy. That's pretty much what it is from the MiG-29, right? Has around 315 meters per second of climb, so pretty much on the same ballpark as the other aircraft that we have in the game right now. And obviously the main thing is that it is a Delta design together with Canard. So it is supposed to be very maneuverable. I don't know how much, you know, maneuverable it would be. It would be amazing. Some people even say that it can technically win a dogfight against an F-22. I don't know about that, but still, it is an amazing aircraft uh, on the sense of turning and dogfighting. Probably would be, I mean, it would definitely be in the same level of what we have onwards, you know, so even better. So at least like a MiG-29 and F-16 Block 10, but it probably better. And especially being a Delta Wing together with such two strong engines, man. Eight, I mean, static power of 180 kilonewtons in a delta wing, I mean, it's whew, it's good, it's good. It's like twice as much power as a MiG-21 in an optimal condition. So it's really strong, it really is strong. Uh, so overall the performance, I would say that it's at least on the same level, but better on a lot of things as well, right? Uh, the weapons are one of the main things about an aircraft, right, a combat aircraft. So, of course, one BK-27, 27mm uh, Mauser cannon, you know, same as in the Tornadoes, 150 rounds, nothing too crazy to talk about. But then we talk about the missiles. 13 pylons, I could confirm that it can carry at least 12 missiles, but with double stack pylons, it, there's even photos of these, of carrying, carrying 16 air-to-air -air missiles. So... Even though it's a very light aircraft, and I wouldn't take these many missiles in a normal match in War Thunder, but, uh, because it would be too heavy, right? Uh, but still, it's interesting that it can do that. Um, for the sake of initial models, 
uh, that we would see in game, the weapons, the missiles, uh, air to air missiles, would be A9s and AM20s, okay? Um, I don't know which one, I don't know how Gaijin would add this, if it's just going to be the A9Ms or already the Xs and the AM20s A's and B's or directly these later C's, right, that are uh, much improved. So we don't know exactly what type of weapon we will see at first, but definitely not as Rams, IRSTs, uh, I Iris T's, I mean. Iris T's, I don't know how do you I pronounce that in English, um, you know, uh, Meteor missiles, missiles like that probably wouldn't be added at first. So expecting 9s and M120s first, you know. Uh, later, obviously, as I said, as Rams, for example, for the UK, for the Germans, the ADST, uh, for the, the Italians, maybe the SRAM, I would guess, I don't know what they use, IDST probably as well, I don't know, but still. Uh, and the Meteor, for example, only in later versions, probably uh, in more Thunder. So expect these early missiles uh, to be M120s and M9Ms or Xs, right? Um, of course, it can do some air to ground as well. Initially, in the first models, it was basically only limited for laser guided bombs and stuff that would need uh, the lasing for, from a body, right? So um, there is that. But after a while, it could take, for example, the Brimstone 2, the Storm Shadow, missiles like that as well. So it can be a very, a, a kind of very good, you know, with maybe even uh, thermal pods and stuff, a kind of very good cast aircraft as well. But the main thing will always be air-to-air, -air, right? Uh, and talking about the air-to-air -air and the missiles, what are the sensors that this aircraft can actually have? And it has a very interesting radar. But first, IRST. Obviously, later versions will have the IRST. At first, probably not. As I said, uh, we will probably see the first variants of the 2000s, you know, uh, or late 90s, whatever, um, without this IRST, you know, added to the game with these older missiles and stuff. And then later, more advanced versions with these missiles, uh, like the Meteor and stuff, and with the IRST and other stuff. Like, it's just a simple line of thinking that Gaijin will probably do this, this right? Uh, so don't expect an IRST at first, but still. Modern RWRs, nothing to talk about it here. I mean, we don't even have properly modeled uh, mo uh, modern RWRs yet, uh, launch warnings and stuff. So yeah, gonna just by bypass that. Just know that it has a missile warning system, like a MAW system, and it has even a laser warning um, system as well. So I don't know exactly how this would be used, for example, if you lock into the IRST, the autofighter, will it tell the, the autofighter that it's being locked? I don't know, probably, uh, because the IRST of the Russians, for example, they use a laser designator to actually uh, range the target if it's closer, right? So it's, you know, how it is. Obviously, chef and flare and also electronic warfare systems. Uh, for the radar, that's the main important. Uh, the main thing about these aircraft, I mean, one of the main things, uh, mechanically scanned radar. So initially, not a, a, an electronic scanned radar, okay? So no IASA, no PESA, nothing like that. It was a multi-mode radar developed from the Blue Vixen on the FA Mark II Sea Harrier, you know? Uh, so yeah, very, very interesting design. Uh, mainly made for air-to-air, -air, but also can do air-to-ground with many modes. So it has around 185 kilometers of range. These are the more modern versions, if I'm not mistaken, with a one meter squared target. So this radar is amazing. It's amazing. From what we have in the game, nothing can even get close to this. Uh, the max possible range for a larger airliner or bomber would be around 370 kilometers. So I don't know if this is, these figures are for more modern versions of this radar or not, or even for the IASA, I don't know. But for an F-16, F-14, MiG-29, kind of, it would be in the mix between like 185 kilometers and 370. So at least like 200 kilometers of range of radar. It kind of even doesn't matter. It's so much range that, I mean, it will outrange all the missiles that it can carry up to like the meteor or something like that, maybe, right? So it's a very, very powerful radar. Even though it is just a normal mechanically scanned radar, which is quite interesting. Um, it has multiple modes like RWS, for example, range while scan. It has even PDV or pull stopper velocity. TWS, obviously, you know, normal search modes uh, as well. Obviously, ob I mean, it has the within visual range combat modes like the bore sight lock, 
uh, vertical scan, but also is laved acquisition with the Raider as well. Obviously, this is just a normal operation of the Raider. Uh, so nothing too crazy to talk about here. But the air to ground part is very interesting. So it has ground mapping with high resolution maps. So reconnaissance can be done with this. Uh, ground moving target indicator as well. So it can actually do the same thing as the SU-39 does right now. Uh, basically detecting tanks that are moving around and stuff. Sea surface scan. So it can actually uh, detect, um, you know, sh ships that are just... I mean, it's a mode that it will basically make the, miss, the the radar actually detect, uh, be able to detect ships above the sea, right? So it's it's pretty, pretty interesting. And obviously, uh, TWS with ground uh, mode as well with the MTI, right? Uh, to actually see targets. So we can actually do the mapping of the ground and detect moving targets. So pretty much what others can do as well. So it's on par with any other ground radar. You can track both standing targets, depending on the size of the target, obviously, and moving targets, uh, depending less on that, um, more on the moving part, right? It has air to surface ranging, obviously, for guns and stuff, and terrain avoidance, too, if he wants to do a pop-up attack or something like that. He, I couldn't confirm if initially he would receive something like the HMS or HMD, you know, helmets, you know, for tracking and stuff. Uh, initially, I don't, I couldn't confirm if initially you get that, but eventually you will at some point, If even if the first variant uh, didn't receive that. So this is the Eurofighter, guys. You can see that a lot of the times I'm saying stuff that are way above the pay grade of the aircraft that we have in the game. So clearly it needs counters. It cannot be added right now. Uh, everything about this aircraft is amazing compared to the, what the, we have in the game. It's just there's a, it's another level of aircraft, you know. So we really will need another uh, level of additions to actually have this. Uh, the amazing part is that on the bare minimum, is it it is in the same level as a MiG-29. On the bare minimum, you know, like for example, in climb rate and max speed and stuff. On the bare minimum, is that the same as the MiG-29, which is one of the, like it, it is the best aircraft in the game on that sort of thing. So you can already think that it's not only an amazing aircraft at missiles and BVR and radars and stuff, but also in the performance because it, it kind of junctions the thrust weight, the po sheer power, acceleration, everything like that, uh, as like any normal like interceptor would have. But also together with that, an amazing turning capability together with an amazing sensor uh, suite, you know, and together with amazing missiles and, you know, weapons in general. So it is a complete aircraft. It really, really is a four plus generation, very complete, very much like an MBT, uh, if you compare to a medium tank and a heavy tank, right? It, it really is that sort of improvement over the older interceptors slash light fighters, heavy fighters and stuff that uh, the Cold War had, right? So it's a very interesting aircraft. I'm excited to see this, uh, hopefully soon, hopefully together with the Gripen. And I mean, I don't know, if the Gripen is added, I will play that thing. But if this thing is added together with the Gripen, I probably might not even play the Gripen as much as I wanted to, because this thing will be so good. And don't get me wrong, the Gripen is amazing, but I just feel that the Eurofighter is a bit better. I don't know, it's just my personal bias maybe, even though my country uses the Gripen. Uh, but still, <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think about the Eurofighter the Typhoon. If you think it will be OP or not, depending on the counters, always remember that. Counters will come to this aircraft. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have to consider the Rafale, the Gripen, better versions of fourth generation aircraft that we have already. So always consider that. But let me know in the comments what you think about it. And I see you guys on the next one. Bye guys. See you.